let's uh, consider for a moment the graph of the function y equals 2x on the interval from 0 to 6. And we're going to say that big F of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of 2t dt. And you should recognize this from previous work as the accumulation function. Right? Or it's a way of expressing expressing the accumulated area under the curve starting from zero and moving to some x value. So let's just look at the table of values here starting from x equals zero to six. So if we start at zero then for big F of x, the area under the curve would be 0. If we go to 1, then what we would have is a triangle with a height of 2 and a base of 1, so its area would be 1. And that's what big F of x represents at this point. If we go to 2, then what we have is a triangle with a base of 2 and a height of 4. So its area is 4. And if we continue on in this way, what we'll see is the area going from 4 to 9 at 3, from 9 to 16 at 4, and from 16 to 25 at 5. And what's, what you should notice about this regarding the relationship between x and big F of x is that big F of x is what are, is x squared. So that means, or it appears at any rate, that the integral from 0 to x of 2t dt is equal to x squared. That's what it looks like if we're, talk, if we're thinking about this as accumulated area under the curve. Let's do the same thing, but this time let's consider cosine x. So here's a quick sketch of a cosine graph going, focusing on going from 0 to 2 pi. And so in this case what we're considering is that the function big F of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of cosine t dt. And again, all this means is what is the accumulated area under the curve as we go from 0 to some x value. Now we could do this um, and using our calculator, and I'll do this um, by hand. So if we look at the area under the curve. Take the back. I won't do this by hand. Go ahead and read at the bottom of the page the instructions on how to get the values we need using your calculator. So pause the video and go through this yourself and we'll have a sense of some data that will be plotted. And one of the things that you have to find uh, to set this thing up is function integrate f n i n t and tells you again that that's math 9 so again go through all the steps um, to work through this and we'll fill in a table so what we did on this to get this information is in y1 we graphed cosine x and in y2 we hit math 9 and that gave us function integrate. So we're looking at the integral. And then we chose y1, which is vars. Move to the right, y vars. Choose option 1, which is function. And then choose y1, comma, x, comma, 0, comma, x. And when we looked in our table, Counting starting at 0 and counting by point 2, f of x is what you get in y2 in the table mode. Now these this data might not mean anything, but if we take a moment 
to just plot simply plot these points starting at zero. We've got zero zero and at point four we'll, we'll go up to one. We've got point three eight nine and at point eight point seven one seven and at one point two so I'm counting by point fours we're up close to one and at two we're headed back down and at 2.4 we're headed back down again and if we were to just trace this data out and go all the way to 2 pi we're going to have a shape that looks something like this and it's a sine graph so just based on observation of our accumulation function we can see a relationship we already know that the integral that the derivative of sine is cosine and we shouldn't, shouldn't be surprised that the integral of cosine then would be a sine graph but again right now we're just relating this to the accumulation function and so from here we if you can see this and, and this makes sense then we can state what's called the fundamental theorem of calculus and what the fundamental theorem of calculus does is it connects ideas of derivatives to integrals. So let me write it out for you and also state it in an attempt to explain it at the same time. If a function f, and we'll call it little f, is continuous, so there's the necessary condition, the function has to be continuous. On a closed interval, and the closed interval we'll say is the interval a to b, Now the next condition, and big F is an antiderivative of little f on A to B. So we're just relating our terms, big F and little f. What we know about little f is it's continuous on a closed interval, and big F is an antiderivative of little f. Or, yes, if that's true, then what must follow is that the integral from A to B, so from one endpoint to another of our interval, the integral of little f of x d of x must be equal to what you get when you substitute f of when you substitute b into big F and subtract from it what you get when you substitute a into big F and just your two endpoints. What this does is allow you, it allows you to find the area under the curve using the process of integration rather than having to use the limit of a sum, rather than having to use a Riemann sum. Right? So this connection allows us to no longer use Riemann sums and use what is called definite integrals. And so in the second part of this uh, lecture, we will look at a number of examples of the process of definite integrals and in the third part we'll go over how you can use your calculator um, to find a definite integral